Hello and welcome to Investors Hangout. This weekly interaction to help you learn and understand savings and investment options is brought to you by Aditya Birla Sun Life Mutual Fund and Value Research. Now it's been 15 years since NPS was open to general public and today it's a it's a component of pivotal component of retirement planning in India. And Dhirendra here is a member of Pension Advisory Committee of PF, PFRDA. So who better than him to you know tell us why should we opt for NPS for our retirement. So Dhirendra first up for the uninitiated why don't you tell us how you know what exactly is NPS and how it has evolved over the years. It was created for government employees and government employees were entitled to something called a defined benefit system that mm -hmm. if you put in this much of service you will get this much of retirement you know this much of pension in your retirement on the day you retire which was linked to the last salary received and that you know government employees had the privilege state government as well as state central government it will be adjusted for inflation right. they will keep you know it will keep getting revised year on year and this this was a great privilege there was a defined contribution system which was initiated and that is effective from year 2004 mm -hmm. all government employees who came on board from 1st of april 2004 the national pension system was initiated for them here the system for the government employee was that you know you put your ten, you know 10% of your salary will be deducted 10% will be matched by the government it will be invested in a mutual fund it will be invested in a mutual fund kind of uh, vehicle mm -hmm. uh, which is the pension plans and uh, you will keep accumulating all your life government will keep matching month after month your your of your deduction so effectively for government employees the money was doubling immediately Mm -hmm. then it is getting invested and it will remain invested for 30 35 years or till the till, till the period you retire you don't retire so can you explain the auto choice and uh, uh, the active choice options that are available so auto choice was quite a innovation from nps that there are three plans aggressive moderate life cycle and conservative where uh, it's almost like the asset allocation which we keep suggesting in all our programs or you know all our interactions or writings that uh, as you get more conservative, as you get closer to your needing that money, it should be substantial into fixed income. Mm. In the phase of your life when you your money has to grow, it should be substantially into equity. And that is what that aggressive plan is. Mm. And uh, the moderate plan is actually mixing it up, blending it up so that uh, you are able to de-risk yourself partially and you don't, you know, do it in a knee jerk way. Mm. So this is this is the broad premise. This is a broad principle based on which this auto choice is. And the active choice is that you choose to allocate as much money into equity as you want to. The maximum of that could be 75%. Right. Which to my, you know, most people listening to us should go for an active choice and have 75% allocation to equity till five years before their retirement. Because if anybody who gets used to this ups and downs, the rewards of bearing this up and down is so phenomenal that... Uh, uh, you know, it's worthwhile to have and you need to invest, remain invested in equity for a long period of time to derive the most of it. Mm. So you should do that. Mm. So go for active choice, have 75% allocation only as you get closer to your retirement, have, you know, plan your investments, how much of money will get into annuity and what, what will be the income that it can provide. Mm. Or do you need to because now it is possible to retain your even the 60% into NPS plan mount of systematic withdrawal plan start getting a regular income from that mm. and the 40 percent that you buy annuity that can also provide you some guaranteed income yeah and that's a recent change plus uh, that's a you recent can change. you can choose a fund managers according to your oh, those are also. those are you know those those were technical glitches which were not enabled earlier earlier it was not possible to have a mechanism whereby you like this equity fund of another fund company you like this equity fund of another fund company and a government securities fund, uh, you, you necessarily had to choose the three plans mm -hmm. or two plans, 75, 25 of, of equity and debt of the same fund same company. Fund. Yeah. Now it is possible to pick and choose and now there are more pension fund managers uh, options available. Now there are more and more people joining this to manage it. There are more and more asset managers, pension fund managers, part of your choice. So look at value search online look at the pension plans we have been calculating the performance of all the pension plans from day, day zero and uh, 
uh, you have the full history. You can also look at the individual page of each and every fund mm -hmm. that how they have done. So you get a page like a mutual fund mm -hmm. on each and every NPS plan. Okay, so before we move on, I'd like to ask a question sent in by our viewer. Purnima Singh asks, is NPS also useful for those who have 10 years left for retirement? NPS could be useful even if you are 10 years away from your retirement. Because NPS is low cost, mm -hmm. because NPS forces you to invest and you can't touch it. If you are a little indisciplined, if you are a little, you know, if you are tempted to spend your money, uh, NPS could be a great option, great choice. 10 years is a good enough period where you can have some meaningful accumulation. Okay, now can you please list the top five benefits of investing in uh, NPS for retirement, starting with the first one? First is that, you know, what everybody thinks is a disadvantage. Mm -hmm. That once you put your money in NPS, you can't take it out easily on a fl for, a, for a flimsy reason. Yeah. That's one. Second is the low cost. You can't get this, this low cost, you know, uh, of asset management anywhere else. Third is that, you know, uh, if you are a private sector employee, your employer's contribution is completely tax free. It is your income. It is possible to invest or get allocated 10% of your basic salary contribution from your employer into NPS. So it is a deductible expense for the employer mm. and it is not considered as your income. This is the only tax free income available to you, which can be invested, can be uh, and can be meant for your retirement. And just you know, above your, the one, one lakh fifty thousand. It is over, over and now. above the ATC and ATCCD. Yeah. So you can put your own contribution of two lakh rupees, which is tax exempt. You can put your ATC money into a tax saving fund, fifty thousand rupee into NPS. That is one side. Mm. If your employer is putting one lakh rupee, fifty thousand rupee, five lakh rupees, as, which cannot be more than ten percent of your basic salary. Mm. If that is a possibility, then that is the other tax free income that you can have and that could be quite meaningful. Mm. There is one unique advantage of NPS which is not there even with mutual fund. Mm -hmm. You put your money in NPS and move your money from equity to debt or debt to equity. Mm. And this movement, it is completely tax free. Mm. It is tax neutral. You do, you're not liable to pay taxes. The money that you put in tier two, it's almost like a mutual fund. You put your money in an equity fund, you put your money in a debt fund, equity goes up dramatically, move money from equity to the debt or debt to the equity, mm. no taxes. Mm -hmm. So it is a tax sheltered vehicle and perhaps the only tax sheltered vehicle uh, from, from changing allocation. Okay, and the fifth one then? There is one unique advantage of NPS. When it comes to in, you know mutual fund or any pooled vehicle, there could be all kind of variety of investors in say for example in a small cap fund or in a in a debt fund there could be a big company investing in there could be a long term investor investing in there could be a short term investing you know investor putting his money market cracks you know go, goes down dramatically some people take their money out here it is a pool of long term investors mm. all the money that has come in is likely to substantially remain there for many many years yeah. So the fund manager can actually take a long term view. Short term movements or actions of investors don't really disrupt the investment plan. So that is, a, that is also a very unique advantage of NPS. All right, now that's about NPS. There's a viewer's question now that uh, Dhirendra will answer. Harsh asks, what is a good time to invest in NASDAQ 100 index fund that is before or after Fed interest rate cut or any other criteria? You know, first you should ask yourself, why do you want to invest in NASDAQ 100? Mm. And the reason why you want to invest in NASDAQ 100 is that it is a compelling investment option. Mm. NASDAQ 100 is a collection of companies which are, you know, technological, uh, they, they are leaps ahead of any technology, you know, on, in, on the technology pack. Right. And with ease, you are able to participate or invest in such companies. Uh, which is and they are the investment alternative or their investment vehicle uh, their opportunities which is otherwise not available to Indian investors and that is the reason yeah. so you should invest your money in Nasdaq 100 for next 10 15 years anyway mm -hmm. interest rate cut by Fed or not is one aspect Indian markets being more attractive or less attractive is another aspect but if you worry about those things you will never invest don't try and time it you should make long term investment in Nasdaq 100 for the for, for the substantial benefit that it is a, a vehicle whereby you will be able to participate in companies 
or invest in companies which you should for the long term if the world is going to you know grow or you know all the optimism around technology or all the technological change is happening and uh, if this is the basis why we should you should choose nasdaq 100 then i think the only thing you should worry about is when the indian government permits you to uh, invest liberally because most of the vehicles are now uh, you you can't invest through them because there is a restriction rbi has put a restriction on the funds in which uh, indians invest simply because you know they have crossed the the etf has crossed the ceiling of you know 2 billion dollar or you know 5 billion dollar and that should open up sometime but uh, as and when it possible uh, my suggestion will be plan your investments do your sip and do your sip in the vehicle where it is possible to do it even now well that's all we have for you in today's episode keep watching the space for more information if you like the show do subscribe to our youtube channel take care bye for now